Hi everyone, the date is Tuesday, September 30th, the last day of September. I hope you're having a great day. I wanted to provide this severe weather briefing because we do have the potential for severe storms coming in on Thursday. Let me get you caught up with the latest. This is a couple of days out, so timing could change, but let me let you know what the latest thinking is. First of all, we're going to start off with the four W's. What are the four threats? What do you need to know about the severe weather potential? Well, we'll start off with the main threats, which is strong damaging winds with a line of storms. Also, there will be plenty of instability for these storms to produce if they can remain isolated. Large hail up to two inches or possibly even larger, but that remains to be seen. There will also be a conditional tornado threat. Now, what I mean by conditional is we got to see how the storms evolve if they remain as a solid squall line then the tornado potential will be less but if those storms become isolated even have an isolated supercell ahead of a squall line or we have a broken line of storms known as a QLCS which stands for quasi linear convective system that could bring tornado potential because the wind shear, wind shear will be in place. So when does all this arrive? Well, there's a slight chance for a few pop-up storms Wednesday evening in northwest Arkansas, but the greatest threat and the greatest chance for severe weather will be on Thursday, and we are looking for the midday hours on Thursday, so anywhere between 11 a.m. until 5 p.m. for that time frame. And where will it hit? Well, we're looking at that potential on Wednesday evening in southeast Kansas. So if you are a storm spotter or a storm chaser and you want to uh, chase some supercell storms, that looks pretty likely in eastern and northeastern Kansas and could even extend into southeastern Kansas, very close to the Parsons area. Eastern Oklahoma, thunderstorms will develop along a cold front Thursday morning, and those will most likely move in by early Thursday afternoon into the northwest Arkansas River Valley area. Finally, a huge dip in the jet stream, as you'll see here coming up in just a bit. We also have lots of Gulf of Mexico moisture streaming in and strong low-level winds. So our severe weather risk, again, this is recorded on Tuesday afternoon, September 30th. This, however, is for October 1st, the first day of September. You will notice a heightened area of severe weather just off to our northwest, and that's in uh, central Kansas as well as southeastern Kansas and north central Oklahoma. The risk, however, shifts for what we call the day three convective outlook from the Storm Prediction Center over a good portion of the viewing area. In fact, the entire viewing area will be under the threat for severe weather, and you will notice that we are on the western edge of this threat. Now this goes from Thursday morning until early Friday morning and the greatest potential for Friday morning storms will be well off to our east. So we're not looking at the potential for severe weather as you'll see on Friday but Thursday during the midday hours. So what will be the setup? Well first of all we have a strong cold front that is organizing to our northwest. That will start to move eastward and you will notice that this front is going to be sliding in by Thursday afternoon. And so that's one of the things that we're looking at. Also, we have that warm, humid air drawing up from the Gulf of Mexico ahead of this cold front. Much colder air behind the front, which we will be feeling the effects of over the weekend. And there's that collision of the air. You see how the winds come in from the south ahead of the front, and they come in from the northwest. So this collision of air right here will produce that potential for thunderstorms. We also have plenty of jet stream energy so because of that jet stream energy uh, really taking a dip and moving in, and even this storm becomes what we call a negatively tilted trough, thunderstorms will most likely develop. So that severe weather potential is ahead of the front by Thursday afternoon as temperatures warm into the lower 80s. Now the timing of this system has slowed down just a little bit. So notice the next 72 hours, thunderstorms that pop up again in northeastern Kansas. We're looking for activity, though, watch this, by Wednesday afternoon in southeastern and eastern Kansas, right about after 3 o'clock, according to the latest future track model. There you can see those thunderstorms popping up. So all the storms on Wednesday, except for the possibility of a slight chance of an isolated storm in northwest Arkansas, will remain off to our north in central and southwest Missouri and southeast Kansas. Notice how those storms move out. That's going to set the stage, though, off to our west. Again, focus on eastern Oklahoma along the front. 
here comes that system moving in and watch the explosion of thunderstorms after the noon hour and we're talking about the potential for an isolated supercell which of course 72 hours or you know a little bit uh, less than 72 hours out that's very difficult to discern exactly what type of convective mode we will have whether it will be a linear squall line or isolated supercells notice the future track does develop this into a squall line however this is looking a little ominous in the Washita's on uh, Thursday afternoon into the early evening notice Friday morning the system's gone and everything moves out so here's a little bit more of a zoomed in view temperatures will begin very mild on Thursday we'll start off at about 70 degrees during the afternoon you'll notice again eastern Oklahoma look at the explosion of thunderstorms here is an isolated storm and if this rings true this will have the potential to produce tornadoes because the wind shear is in place throughout the early part of Thursday again with those strong low level winds coming out of the south but as that system swings through those winds will begin to what we call veer meaning instead of blowing in from the south or coming from the south they will blow from the southwest and that will lessen that tornado potential with the northeast storm motion but look at that storm uh, Thursday late uh, early afternoon into the late afternoon and then you'll notice that line of storms moving through and everything is looking great for Friday no issues Friday afternoon for severe weather all the storms will be long gone by Thursday afternoon and you can see by Friday how about that for some cooler weather significantly cooler behind the front with highs in the 60s on uh, Friday afternoon, possibly.